This is a quick start for current owners of the Pi Lag Tester Pro. It's meant for people who aren't super enthusiastic about reading the manual, at least at first. And so we're just going to do a very quick running through of the paces here. When you first turn on the device, you're going to get a quick start guide here, just a few short sentences describing some of the commands. But of course, we're going to skip that and go straight to actually making it show something. So in order to start the lag test, you type LT and hit enter. And there you go. So I've already taped the sensor in the upper left-hand corner. That's that sort of darkish blue thing. And so we're measuring the lag up there. Printed in the, in the upper right-hand corner is the currently measured input lag. And then input lag plus response time, which is what I call the full response. Now, if we want to take an average of several measurements, we can just hit space bar and it starts recording measurements. You can see we're recording about one a second. This particular TV you can see is extremely consistent, varying only by maybe a tenth of a millisecond on average. So we don't need very many measurements. Hit escape when we're done collecting all the measurements that we want. It prints out each measurement that it took and then the average of those. So one of the most common things you want to do is change which resolution you want to use. And the quick start lists the built-in ones that you can get to most easily. You type TV, you push tab a couple times, and it'll show you the built-in ones. Right now we're doing 720p, but let's switch to 1080p. So I just type TV 1080p and hit enter, and it immediately switches to that mode. Ignore the font size here, that's not really relevant. All right, now in order to measure input lag, again, this new mode, we type LT and hit enter, and boom, we're back in here. And you can see that the input lag really hasn't changed any in this particular mode. So on this TV, 720p and 1080p have basically the same lag. Now, this TV supports a decent number of modes. Let's take a look. There they are. Uh, particularly, what might be interesting to look at is one of the modes that's built for watching movies. So if you look roughly in the middle of the screen, you'll see that mode 32 runs at 24 hertz, just like a film would. So let's switch to that one. That's in the CEA group. So we type TV CEA. If I could type and record a video at the same time, that'd be great. I uh, really am having a hard time here. Okay, TV, CEA, and then we're interested in mode 32. We hit enter, and it switches immediately to 1080p at 24 hertz. Now let's see what sort of input lag we have on that. Of course, no one's really going to be playing a video game at 24 hertz, but what we might be interested in seeing is whether or not the screen is really drawing at 24 hertz. If it's not drawing at 24 hertz, we should expect to see fairly variable input lag. And we don't see that. The input lag is quite consistent here, about 48.8 milliseconds. So that means this TV is drawing 24 hertz nice and smoothly, which means that it would be very good for watching movies. Let's contrast that to a different mode here that uh, the TV can't actually handle. So this TV advertises that it supports 75 hertz. Again, this is uh, roughly in the middle of the screen now under the DMT uh, set of modes. And if we look, we can see that uh, DMT mode 21 runs at 75 hertz. So to switch to that, we type TV DMT. Gosh, we attempt to type it. Okay, TV DMT and then 21. So now we're in that mode. If we type LT and get into the lag tester, what we can see immediately is that the input lag is bouncing around a lot. The reason why it's bouncing around is that in order to draw a 75 hertz input signal at 60 hertz, it just throws away 15 frames per second. And so that's going to cause input lag to be fairly inconsistent. So that tells you this TV really only handles 60 hertz and below. So don't necessarily trust your TV just because it says it supports a mode doesn't mean that it draws that mode realistically. It just means that it can handle it on the video processing side. All right, I said this would be a quick start, and uh, I think that will probably do. 
Uh, one last thing, if you want to look at the recordings that you've taken, one easy way is to type cat and then log.text. And there's all the recordings I've taken on this particular device. I can use shift page up and page down to page through them. And you can see I've measured quite a lot of displays. And this is not even probably a quarter of them.